Good evening, Willem. Thanks very much for your time. Tell me about the National Ventilator Project and how it came about exactly. Yeah, so you know, there was a realization that we weren't going to be able to you know, have enough traditional ventilators to you know, address the, the whole pandemic, simply because traditional ventilators are way too expensive. Um, so we realized that one would need to build custom-made ventilators specifically, you know, customized to treat COVID patients. And, um, you know, that obviously then requires uh, a development and, you know, you need to go through a thorough process to test them and to get those ventilators approved. And the whole goal was to build something that was significantly cheaper than what you could currently get simply so that you can produce enough of these ventilators to actually you know, treat um, just about everybody that, that needs it. So you don't get to the point where the doctor needs to make a decision on who gets a ventilator and who does not get it. So, you know, we got involved by um, the Minister Patel from DTIC mandating Sarayo to actually manage these activities to develop these ventilators. Now, I understand that there are about 6,000 ventilators in South Africa, and you're hoping to produce about 10,000. Um, have any actually been made as yet? Yeah, so let's just take a step back there, um, and, and let me give you a quick overview of what we've done in the last three months. You know, so first of all, you've got to do the development for these ventilators, because one of the worst things that you can do is to start running off in the wrong direction <clears throat> and either build or develop something that is not what you require. So we developed a specification with input from clinicians, and that was at the end of March. We went out on a call for proposals. We got a number of very good proposals. Um, we contracted a number of companies to develop prototypes. Those prototypes were okay. tested against the specification. And you know, the ones that we selected um, has then also gone through the whole SAPRA approval process. So we've now got <coughs> prototypes that's been SAPRA approved. You know, otherwise, you can't roll them out to sure. the hospital. Sure. And um, we've just placed a production contract for 10,000 units on, on CSIR, and there's additional contracts that's being negotiated at the moment. Uh, so when are you likely to have the very first uh, ventilators? Ready. Uh, so we should have 2,000 units by the end of this month and then 10,000 units beginning of September. And how much cheaper are they than the ones that we import, I presume? Yeah, so, so roughly we're looking at a unit you know, with mask and patient circuit and so forth, around 10,000 rand a unit, um, whereas traditional ventilators are in the order of 100,000 and more. So you can just imagine if you need 10,000 of those then if, if at a cost of 100,000, it's, it's a billion rand that you need to get funding for in order to build them. Whereas <laughs> at 10,000 rand, it's 100 million. Um, I, mean, I can just tell getting, getting funding for 100 million is a lot more palatable than 1 billion. <laughs> absolutely, but I mean, it's a, it's a great deal cheaper, 10,000 rand compared to 100,000 rand. Surely, I mean, this is a huge win for manufacturing in South Africa. And I know that uh, Philippa Rodson of the Manufacturing Circle was quite involved and, and really passionate about this as well. But surely this is something that we could potentially export to other countries. Yeah, so that is definitely something that um, DTIC is also looking at to, you know, once the pandemic is over, to create a new industry and um, you know, manufacturing opportunities with this. Um, I, I just do need to say that you know, these ventilators is not invasive ventilators, so it's um, you know, very specifically built for COVID patients, and it's also built to be very reliable, you know, easy to operate and so forth, because for the COVID pandemic, uh, you're not going to have a doctor that can find you in every single device, so it, it does have to be something that's robust and easy to operate. So we took all of that into account when we were doing this development. I am fascinated by the, uh, the ability to, to refashion your skills. I mean, how, how difficult was it to turn your skills from meerkat radio telescopes to respiratory ventilators? Yeah, um, you know, fortunately, I must say I've got a great engineering team at, at Sarayo. And I've always known that guys and girls were good, but I've just seen that again. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, if, if you follow a proper system engineering process, then what you need to do is you need to translate your user requirements into engineering requirements. And once you've done that, then what you need is a good engineer to solve that problem for you. 
And um, <clears throat> I, I was once again pleasantly surprised at you know, how quickly um, you know our top engineers just um, went into the industry, which they did not have a lot of experience, and just got on top of That's the problem amazing. and solved it. Yeah, that nothing like a problem to solve. Engineers love that. And also, of course, I'm sure it's created a lot of jobs. Are you able to tell me how many? Um, I think for the one, for the production contract that we've awarded now, it's in the order of 50 jobs. Um, that's included manufacturing and also awesome. the distribution. So, yeah. Well, that's wonderful news, and uh, we look forward to seeing the very first uh, rolling off the production line <laughs> at the end of July 2000. Uh, South African developed uh, uh, respiratory ventilators. Thank you very much, Willem Esterhazer. Of uh, he's the general manager of the National Ventilator Project.